Hi, I'm Artie Fahey. Welcome to Bar Mills and we're going to do a little bit of a clinic today. And the clinic is basically going to kind of encompass the whole idea of the look you would get uh, during the course of dry brushing a structure or whatever to uh, add texture to the uh, surface of the structure. Adding texture to shingles or windows or whatever. Uh, but especially in this case uh, we're going to talk about adding the look of a dry brush but with a lot more controllability than you, you can get by actually using paint on a dry brush. Anyone who's been in the hobby for any length of time knows that dry brushing uh, can be easily uh, and very inexpensively introduced to any model simply using a flat tipped brush wiped all but dry after dipping into some paint and stroking lightly along the surface of your structure in this case will add visual detail to especially surfaces like shingles and so on and help them visually pop making them more visible on your model especially from the distance that we see them uh, typically on a layout where we're looking from three to five feet away at the overall scenes. Now, while adding paint to a, a, a surface to bring up the detail is one way to approach uh, emphasizing uh, the textures of the model, I prefer to use something that's more of a uh, subtractive way of doing things. What we're going to do is prepare everything we need, paint and prime everything we need, and then instead of adding a bright dry brush technique, uh, to a model, we're going to actually subtract paint from the existing model. And here's how it's done. What we're going to do here is show you some close-up photos of a, of a model I'll uh, build here just for this demonstration. And basically how it's going to work is this. Take your surface that you're going to be using. Let's use shingles. They really they really benefit the most from extra visual pop because they're so delicate and so fine and add such wonderful detail to our models. Take your shingle sheet. Uh, and if you're using a bar mills kit, you'll notice the shingles are sticky backed. They are on a sheet, pre-laser cut, and have to be simply lifted away from the sheet. But before you go lifting anything, just take the sheet, put uh, beneath it a piece of scrap paper, newspaper, something uh, that will protect the surface under the shingles. Lay the uh, shingles on top of the newspaper and grab a can of gray primer. Now this is nothing new to uh, anyone who's built a bar mills kit. We use gray primer for a lot of things. The nice thing about the primer is it's uh, easily available in canned form as an aerosol for generally about a dollar to a couple dollars per can. Uh, what you're going to want to do is not oversaturate because you do have adhesive on the back of the shingles, but lightly spray the gray primer to cover the sheets of shingles, whether they're cedar shake, three tab, or even rolled roofing. So lightly cover the uh, shingled areas or the shingles, pardon me, with gray primer and let them dry for a couple of minutes. What we're going to do next really depends upon what uh, tools you have available. We like to use spray paint, whether it's out of an aerosol can or out of an airbrush, especially on shingles, because here again, there's always the possibility that oversaturating the shingles will destroy the adhesive backing quality of the things and they will no longer uh, be self-adhesive. What we do is we use an airbrush and we pick out a finishing color. Now the shingles at this point have been sprayed gray out of an aerosol can so anybody out there can easily get a hold of an aerosol can. It's not a matter of availability. What we'll do is we'll take a, uh, a uh, an airbrush and some, I, we use polyscale paint. It's a water-based paint as you all know. You could use craft store paint or whatever but we uh, prefer acrylics or watercolors and we're going to take our airbrush and lightly spray the uh, the shingles that have been primed the gray color with the finish color of our choice. In this case we're going to use something light. 
uh, either a depot buff or some kind of a yellow and entirely coat, lightly coat, the surface of the shingles uh, with the new color. Now, the nice thing about applying with an airbrush is you can apply a very light coat and go back and add a little bit more to it if you feel that the paint has not been covered well enough. Um, at this point, uh, you would be done if you were using an airbrush. If you're going to use a paintbrush, use a flat brush, being careful not to oversaturate the shingles and do essentially the same thing and cover your surface. If you add too much paint, the, um, the shingles may actually stick to their backing behind uh, the shingles onto the adhesive backing. So be careful to lightly apply uh, any color you have using either a flat brush or an airbrush as we do uh, before going on to the next step. Now the next obvious thing is we have all of these shingles that have to be lifted away and adhere to some kind of a wall surface. Uh, typically, uh, the walls that we apply shingles to are made from cardstock. More often than not, they are scribed, so you can follow the scribe lines. You don't have to lay shingles on top of each scribed line uh, for precision uh, situation. The scribed lines are only there so you have an idea what straight is. In other words, you don't want to apply shingles uh, either going up or down shingles have to be applied uh, what would be parallel to the ground surface of the model. So the idea here is add the shingles starting at the bottom course typically on a wall uh, or even for that matter on a roof and work towards the top being careful to uh, to keep the shingles straight as you go along. We actually on a wall section would typically shingle over any window or door openings to keep everything square. Once the shingles have been uh, applied and pressed into position, we would turn the surface area over, the wall section or the roof area over, and using a sharp hobby knife, would trim around the perimeter of the area and thereby trim the shingle, uh, the sh the shingle appliques that we've just installed. Another good way to trim shingles is using a pair of cuticle scissors and it's something I've been doing for years. It's very safe, very, uh, very predictable and it will give you great results. Uh, as far as doors and window openings, if you use what essentially is a chisel blade on your X-Acto knife, you can easily trim out the interiors of the windows and doors from the rear side of the wall sections add to the shingles have been applied and uh, if you do it that way uh, you will not have to risk possibly the shingles rising or falling in one direction or another while you try to shingle around the doors and windows. Now we've all seen instances and many of you I'm sure have noticed this where uh, weathering, uh, specifically dry brushing, is added after windows and doors have been installed in wall sections. If you're dealing with a roof, obviously you don't have this issue. But when you're dealing with walls and you have doors and window openings, always, always make it a point to, uh, to add your weathering before the installation of these uh, additional components. Uh, if I can find one, I'll post up a picture here uh, to let you see exactly how oh, how terrible really it comes out if you install the doors and windows and try to dry brush around them. It simply is not, uh, not up to the bar mill standards or any standards for any uh, model contest. Uh, so be careful uh, and be sure to always work the walls flat on your work uh, bench and install and apply any dry brushing or dry brushing effect before installing the windows and doors. This time around we're going to do something very different. We are not going to use a dry brush to get the dry brush effect. Let me show you how this is done. What you're going to want to have handy is a standard old piece of emery cloth. The older the better. Something that's really worn out works really well. And you're going to want to keep in mind that this piece of emery cloth is going to be used to essentially scrape away the upper coat of paint off of the shingled areas, leaving the lower coat, in this case gray primer, um, to uh, appear as the upper coat is removed. The idea here is to start 
at the top of the shingled area or the top of a roof pick, not, not a roof pick, a roof peak, peak and work your way down. And uh, while you do that, as you, as, you, as you gently work in vertical, downward vertical strokes, you'll see that the bottoms of the shingles will start having paint removed. Essentially what you're doing is you're adding texture to these surfaces without having to add paint, something that's far more predictable and, and is easily repeatable. Sometimes these things are best explained in the photos that you'll see on the screen in front of you. The whole idea here is to get the dry brush to look without risking putting too much paint on a model. And we've all done that, where we just dry brush something beyond the point of salvation and there's no way of going back and rescuing uh, the, uh, the over application of paint that we may have given it. If you follow this method, an old piece of emery cloth um, brushed vertically in a downward fashion over your shingles, uh, you'll see a very predictable and uh, beautifully weathered result. That's the clinic. This is Art Fahey from Bar Mills. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we appreciate your support.